Somebody says this is a magic show. Oh, yes, and the, and the meeting is live. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the meeting of the Arts Parks Health Education Neighborhood uh, Committee, and it's now called to order. Today is Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021, and the time is 2.05. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, can you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Council Member Lee? Present. Council Member Bonin? Present. And Council Member Ridley Thomas? Yep. Three members and a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And Mr. Clerk, can you please state the rules and guidelines for those wishing to offer a public comment at today's meeting? Yes, uh, members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-368-1180 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, today we'll be having 30 minutes of public comment. Mr. King, can you please begin public comment by uh, calling, announcing the first caller? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, for callers that wish to speak on an item or general public comment, please press star nine on your device to request to speak. Callers will have one minute to speak on general public comment and a maximum of two minutes to speak on agenda items. Please keep your comments on topic and under the purview of this committee. If you do not do so, you will receive one warning, one warning from either the city attorney or the chair. If you do not immediately get back on topic, your time will be forfeited and we will move on to the next caller. Again, please press star nine now to request to speak. Caller with the last four, six, five, nine, five. Please press star six on your device to unmute yourself. Caller with the last four, six, five, nine, five. Please press star six on your device to unmute yourself. Hello, caller. Please state your name and which items you'd like to speak on. Caller with the last four, six, five, nine, five, please state your name and which items you'd like to speak on. Hey, my name is Gonzalo De Lara. I'm resident of uh, District 8. My co-workers filed complaints with the city because of company crews of California stole wages from over 450 of us. Okay, which, which items would you have... like to speak on? Uh, item 3. Okay, you'll have one minute to speak on item 3. Go ahead. My name is Gonzalo De Lara, and I'm a resident of District 8. My co-workers filed a complaint with the city because of uh, company crews of California stole wages from over 150 of us. Crews could have paid uh, this money back when the pandemic started, but they, they've been refusing. They refused. The company laid me off on March. Now I'm uh, behind on my bills. I, got, I, I have to go to Bank Foods to make sure my, me and my kids have enough food to eat. My family could have uh, used this money a long time ago. I cannot believe Cruz did this to us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller with the last four, seven, zero, zero, six. Please, uh, State your name, which items you'd like to speak on? Yes, um, um let's see, items uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, number 54, and uh, 60, and item eight as well, as general public comment. <laughs> Okay, you'll have one minute for general public comment and two minutes for the items, starting now. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so I'm against item number 50. <laughs> now let's get to, uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm an animal. I'm tr trying to learn how to use Mr. Spiller's phone. He's, he's having a Karen moment, so I'll be taking over today. So I'll do my best. 
Now we get to the mirror to the El Pueblo Los Angeles Monument. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I've spoken myself, actually, <laughs> and uh, even Mr. Spengler and others. And the El Pueblo fully complies with the Brown Act. They're they're very nice people. And Goat Puppet has a very high opinion of Mr. Louie, the president, as well as the other people. <laughs> and the executive director of El Pueblo used to work for Gil Cedillo. But I'm asking Irma Becerra Nunez to give free rent to all the El Pueblo merchants for the next year. <laughs> that was what Mr. Weezar promised. Uh, before his demise. So I'm here keeping the spirit of Jose Weezer alive. Uh, right, Staffer B? <laughs> I thought so. Good. Now we get to number two. The Board of Library Commissioners. The library's closed. So no on number two. No more commissioners until you open the fucking library. <laughs> go Puppet can't go in there anymore and use the internet. And Mr. Spindler, being an asshole, he has to use the bathroom, and the bathrooms are closed. <laughs> so open up the goddamn thing. <laughs> Number three, the First and Broadway Partners. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Probably a bunch of assholes. So I'll defer on number three. I'll say conditionally no. Number four, oh, that's Nithya Raman. Okay, we have to give her a chance. Let me write my notes down here. Mr. Spimmer had some notes here. Yeah. Uh, Nithia, uh, be nice. She's a nice lady. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll support number four only if the new councilwoman supports it. Yeah. <laughs> number five, the state funding available for child care. Uh, equitable access to communities of color. Okay, then uh, let's not support any of the white children. Yes, get them out of there. Only brown and black children. Yes. Number six. Oh, this is the juvenile matter. We're going to create a, a minors council. Um, let me see my notes on that. <laughs> um, not until you settle all the lawsuits with all the child rapes occurring at LAPD camps. No on number six. Number seven. Wheelchairs. In Thank state you, caller. Parks. That oh. concludes your time. Yeah. Caller with the last four, four, six, seven, seven. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and which items you'd like to speak on. Item three. My name is Michelle Hurtado, and I've worked for Cruz as a cashier and hostess. Okay, you'll have one about, on item three. Thank you. Okay, so my name, once again, my name is Michelle Hurtado, and I've worked for Cruz as a cashier and hostess. I started May 2018, laid off March 2020. My coworkers filed complaints with the city because our company, Cruz of California, stole wages from over 400 of us. Cruz could, could have paid this money back when the pandemic started, but they refused. I helped take care of my father in Mexico. I had been sending him money to buy medication and masks while struggling to pay my own bills. I have incurred significant debt during this pandemic, being forced to put these charges on credit cards. I cannot believe Cruz did this to us during a pandemic. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller, for your time. Caller with the last four zero three seven one, please press star six to unmute yourself. Hi. Um, I'm speaking on item three. Um, my name is Sherman Bell, and okay, I will have one minute on item three. Okay, no worries. My name is Sherman Bell, and I've worked for Cruz as a server for about nine years. My coworkers filed complaints with the city because. Our company, Cruise of California, stole wages from over 450 of the, 50, I'm sorry, 450 of us. Cruise could have paid this money back when the pandemic started, but they refused. We, when Cruise laid me off, I had four, a four-month-old at home. The money they owed me could have helped pay for Pampers and Formula. As someone who has worked for this company since before they even opened it is incredibly frustrating 
um, what has happened. It's, just, it's incredibly frustrating what has happened to us. I think this could have been handled much better. Um, thank you for your time. Calling in. Caller with the last four, 9241. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and which item you'd like to speak on. Dylan Daney, I'd like to speak on item three. Okay, you'll have one minute. Go ahead. My name is Dylan Daney. Uh, I'm a lead organizer with Unite Here Local 11. I'm also a resident of District 10. I'm here to, to, today to alert you to a disturbing pattern of behavior that we have seen with crews of California during their time operating at LAX. For two years, we told crews that they were violating the law and they ignored us. Crews employees filed complaints with the city and the city ordered crews to pay back hundreds of thousands of dollars in wages stolen from our members. When we pressed the city to make sure that our members received these long overdue wages promptly, a city official informed our representatives that payments to some members would be delayed because crews had to obtain additional financing in order to pay back wages it owed to its own employees. There is now a class action lawsuit pending against crews for the living wage violation and related problems. It is wild to imagine that this has been playing out while Cruz is seeking to expand its business with the city. The behavior of this company has been nothing short of egregious. Thank you, council members, for taking the time to listen to our concerns today. Thank you for calling in. Caller with the last four, 2253. Please uh, press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and which name you'd like to speak on. My name is Jeff Johnson. I'd like to speak on item number three. Okay, you'll have one minute. Go ahead. My name is Jeff Johnson. I've worked with, for Cruz for, as a server for five years. My coworkers filed complaints with the city because our company, Cruz California, sold wages from over 450 of us. Cruz could have paid this money back when the pandemic started, but they refused. Instead, they laid me off. It was extremely stressful not knowing when I would go back to work or whether I'd be able to pay my rent. I cannot believe Cruz did this to us during a pandemic. Thank you for your time. Thank you for calling in. Caller with the last four, 0756, please press star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name Hi. and which you'd like to speak on. Uh, my name is Yasmin Antonio, and I'd like to speak on item three. You'll have one minute. Go ahead. My name is Yasmin Antonio, and I've worked for Cruz as a server for about five years. My coworkers filed complaints with the city because our company, Cruz of California, sold wages from over 450 of us. Cruz could have paid this money back when the pandemic started, but they refused. Instead, they laid me off, and um, we had to stop construction on our house. I spent the pandemic living in boxes and sharing a house with one bathroom and four adults. We had to scrap by just to get the bills paid. This has been intense and has affected my mental health. I cannot believe Cruz did this to us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for calling in. Caller with the last four, one, four, zero, three, please press star six to unmute yourself. Yes, um, yes, um, no, 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 no. I believe you've already spoken. Caller with the last four, three, one, five, zero, please press star six to unmute yourself. Caller with the last four, three, one, five, zero, please press Star six to unmute yourself. Uh, your name and what you'd like to speak on? Oh, absolutely. My name is Greg, Greg Plummer, and I am one of the small business partners. Item speaking on item number three for First okay. and Broadway's partners. You'll have one minute. Go ahead. Thank, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, distinguished council members. I hope you all are well. I am one of the small business partners, uh, first and Broadway partners, uh, looking to move forward with a project downtown at the first and Broadway park. We are excited 
to continue to partner with the city of Los Angeles and really compliment a beautiful project you all have put together. I think some of the attendees here obviously have some challenges that have all been addressed and clarified. You know, I, I am not a, a part of Cruz, but I, I do speak on behalf of to say that they're, you know, we as airport contractors were some of the hardest hit by the pandemic, as you all are aware. And uh, I think some of the information presented here is not necessarily a, a full picture of what's going on. Um, I think we all want the same thing. We want to get all these employees back to work, and we all want everyone to have a, a high level of mental health during this really challenging time. This opportunity really came out of efforts okay, so that, that were conducted that in 2019. Concludes your, concludes your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last four, nine, six, zero, seven. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, my name is Nicholas Cruz. We're speaking on item three. Okay, you'll have one minute uh, starting now. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicholas Cruz. I'm the CEO of Cruz. I'd like to say that we have been a good partner and vendor of the city for over 15 years. Last March, our company was devastated due to the uh, impact of the pandemic. Uh, 2019, we started the negotiations with the union over a new collective bargain agreement. And our reading of the living wage ordinance was the understanding that we should still follow that living wage payment that was in the collective bargain agreement. The OCC did an audit. We have thus made all of the payments for any missed payments that were previously made and have been issued to the employees and to all of the to the city to make those payments over. So we are in full compliance with the living wage. It was a, a pure misunderstanding and interpretation of the agreement. We appreciate our employees. We look forward to bringing them back as the business come back, and we hope that you support this contract going forward so that we can continue to employ more team members throughout the city of Los Angeles. Thank you so much for your time. Calling in. Caller with the name call in user one, please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name and which items you'd like to speak on. Caller, we're having trouble hearing you. I think there may be some technical difficulties with that caller. Caller, if you can hear us, please state which state your name and which items you'd like to speak on. Sounds like a recording. Okay, Mr. Chair, that will conclude public comment. Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, colleagues, if it's okay with you, uh, I would like to put items number four, seven, and eight on consent, unless there's any objection to that. Uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I actually have uh, questions on all three of those. On four, seven, and eight? Yep. Okay. Then why don't we, Mr. Clerk, if you can start with item number one. Yes, item number one is um, communication from the mayor, and this is relative to the appointment of Ms. Irma Becerra Nunez to El Pueblo de Los Angeles Historic Monument Authority. I believe we have Ms. Nunez joining us today at our meeting. Ms. Nunez, hello there. Hi, uh, we just wanted to give you the opportunity to let us know a little bit about yourself and uh, what you uh, hope to accomplish uh, as part of this commission. Uh, well, thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and uh, also uh, your fellow committee members. Um, it's really an honor to be here today. Uh, I want to give you a little idea of my background. I have a very diverse background of experience and, prof and uh, personal and professional experience. Uh, currently, I'm the founder-owner of Doña Irma 
Mexican American Heritage Arts Institute. I'm also the co-founder chair of the Coalition to Save the First Street Store Chicano Historical Monument, uh, which was constructed in 1975 and featured in the Pacific Standard Time uh, exhibition at uh, LACMA uh, this uh, recently, and also at the UCLA Fowler Museum as part of Pacific Standard Time. And I'm a past uh, founder chair of the California Coalition to Save Older Adult Education. Um, I grew up in City Terrace, East Los Angeles, which uh, when it was a very diverse community, we had neighbors who were Jap Japanese American. Uh, one neighbor, her oldest daughter, was born in the internment camps. On the other side, we had Italian uh, families who had a bakery in Boyle Heights. And my, my principal teachers and um, were primarily Jewish and um, African American. And so I grew up in a very diverse community. My family were community advocates. Uh, my mother was a real believer in the arts and culture, but she fought for education. Uh, she fought for equal rights for our community and was a real role model to me. And so my, my focus has been using the universal language of the arts to empower and unite our youth society by instilling a sense of cultural pride, self-esteem, while celebrating our cultural diversity and our common human bond. And so I've accomplished this as a multicultural arts educator with Loyola Marymount University, East LA College, and uh, throughout LA Unified School District, K through 12 adult education, older adult education. And I've also worked work as an archivist, a visual and performance artist, producer, director, uh, media and marketing consultant, fine arts curator, distributor, artist representative for internationally renowned Chicano artists uh, and focusing on bilingual multicultural education, uh, Chicano Mexican American historical preservation, community revitalization, but also with a background in Hispanic marketing and communications, having worked with major corporations such as Coca-Cola, AT&T, Anheuser-Busch, and also dealing in aging and health education uh, as a promote, really an advocate for older adult education. I worked with my council member, Paul Koretz, uh, in where we were successful on a state level to uh, preserve older adult education. And we're hoping that it will also be reinstated at some time with LA Unified School District. And so um, being involved as, a, as an archivist, I was also a partner archivist in a 27 hour oral history interview with the Getty Foundation Chicano Arts Survey. And I, I, my, my focus has always been to really get people of all ages, of all backgrounds to celebrate who they are and at the same time to really appreciate people of diverse cultures. In regards to El Pueblo, through my mother, my family history goes back 250 years in California. Uh, General Mariano Guadalupe Vallejo was my great great uh, great grandfather in Northern California. There's not many historical sites. Francisco Lopez was my fourth great grandfather in San Diego. There's historical uh, sites after him and his family. And uh, his nephew, who would have been a great 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 cousin of uh, Francisco Lopez II, actually discovered gold in uh, uh, Canyon Country. There's a monument dedicated to him. And so as a cultural arts educator, I've always encouraged uh, young people and other professionals through parent in-service teacher, uh, in-service training to explore their own backgrounds and to really understand who we are and, and how we can really be united to improve our heritage. With El, with El Pueblo, I'm very excited because there's so much diversity within uh, what El Pueblo encompasses. It has the Chinese Museum, the Italian Museum. It, uh, it partners with La Plaza de Cultura de Arte. We have the merchants who have been there for, for many generations who have really uh, held together the, uh, what our, how our city has been founded and what it means to, to our residents and our community. I know there are many cultural events that take place 
and uh, but at the same time, it's a hub for tourism, which brings economic development uh, into our city. And so I feel my background in cultural arts heritage preservation, uh, in marketing, uh, and also in education can really bring a lot to this commission and the work that we do. Uh, what I would really like to see is uh, to really get more, have more educational programming around uh, El Pueblo. I feel that there's much celebration, but also we need to uh, really better understand who we are, where we came from, and how we really could work together to continue to make our city uh, the great city that it is and that it can be. And I would appreciate any questions that you may have for me uh, in regards to, you know, what I had, what I shared with you. And Ms. Nunez, your history and your resume is extremely impressive. Colleagues, do you have any questions for Ms. Nunez? Oh, with that, Ms. Nunez, I'd like to thank you. El Pueblo obviously is a very important part of our history. Thank you for your uh, commitment to the city of Los Angeles and your willingness to serve on this committee. Uh, Mr. Clerk, if you can call the roll. Thank you so much. And Mr. Chair, to clarify, this is for the approval of her appointment, correct? Correct. Yes, so this, um, Council Member Lee? Aye. Council Member Bonin? Aye. And Council Member Ridley Thomas? Aye. Yes, um, this item passes as approved and will go to Council. Thank you very much. Thank you, you so much. It's an honor to work with you. Thank you. It's our honor. All right, Mr. Clerk, can you read off item number two, please? Yes, item number two is communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Arian Edmonds to the Board of Library Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Espinosa, and I believe Ms. Edmonds is also with us today. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Hello. everyone. There we go. Mm -hmm. Ms. Edmonds, and welcome to our committee. Uh, I'd just like to give you an opportunity to uh, give us a brief history of, of you and uh, what you plan on doing on this committee. Yes, thank you. Um, good afternoon, and, and uh, thank you so much for welcoming me to your meeting this afternoon. Um, as I was listening to uh, uh, the new council member, uh, council, um, uh, sorry, commissioner, we have very similar background. Um, I'm a fifth generation Angelino. Um, I, our family has been here for over 150 years. Um, the first descendant that, um, that moved to Los Angeles was Jefferson Lewis Edmonds, who's my great, great grandfather. He was born enslaved in Mississippi, um, learned to read and write through the Freedom Bureau School and came to Los Angeles and started one of LA's early black newspapers. Um, and so I've dedicated probably the last 12 years um, to, making sure uh, that our city really understands the value um, and some of the forgotten history of our Black Angelino um, kind of original architects. Uh, so that's just a little bit about my family story, um, but most of my work is really focused on curating. Um, I'm an archivist, um, I'm a storyteller, uh, but a big part of my career has really been around uh, social impact. So I've worked in philanthropy for the past uh, 10 years, social impact in philanthropy. Um, I've worked with like major Fortune 500 companies and worked with um, uh, different uh, government agencies, mostly to kind of come in and shake things up a little bit, ask them to uh, think creatively uh, about uh, the way that they make decisions, the way that they think about the public uh, and the way that they engage people. Um, so that has manifested in doing huge uh, design hackathon events uh, where I bring in community members and artists and um, uh, marketing folks to come up with messaging that can actually really help specific causes. So I've done that for um, the census, for the most recent 2020 census. Um, I've worked with a lot of uh, corporate philanthropy groups like Disney and um, Deloitte, uh, American Express. Uh, those are just a few, uh, but the core, the things that, that bring me such joy uh, has really been my relationship with the library. Um, in 2017, my father and I partnered with the library um, to have the, um, our, to make sure that our um, actual 
um, archive was preserved. So everything that's been uh, that's been printed in our paper has been handed down for over a hundred years, and it's been kept at you know various families' homes. Um, and the library worked with us to make sure that everything got digitized. So this history from 1900 to about 1914, um, which talks about some of the big developments that happened in LA, was all recorded in our paper. So um, I've seen kind of firsthand what happens when we introduce. Um, new histories and new stories uh, into our kind of collective memory. Um, and so that's what I hope to do as a commissioner um, is to continue to partner with the digitization and the special and the uh, special collections department to think through how we engage communities across LA. There are all these small archives, I think, in different neighborhoods. And I want to consider how we invite those stories uh, to be recorded uh, so that um, future generations know that we were here, um, that, that we were thinking about them, um, and that we um, care about their stories and their legacies. Uh, so that's a big one. I've partnered with the library a, um, a bunch around um, some of their new publishing opportunities. I'm, I'm writing a book now about uh, our, our family paper and the Black press, um, and I want to consider how we extend um, some of their publishing uh, opportunities for folks who may never consider themselves authors. Um, so those are the kind of two big initiatives that I'd love for us to focus on in the, the five years that I'll be appointed. If I get, if, you know, I know this is, this is a, a discussion, so. Thank that's you, pretty thank, <laughs> thank you, Ms. Edmonds. You also have a very impressive resume in history. Uh, interesting that we have two commissioners, obviously, with long-standing histories here in the city of Los Angeles. Yeah, what a gift. That's and I, I really enjoyed hearing from the other commissioner, too. So, yeah. Uh, ask my, uh, my colleagues, uh, the other council members, if they have any questions for Ms. Edmonds. I'm good on move approval. Okay, seeing that. Ms. Edmonds, thank you again uh, for your interest in serving your city. Uh, Mr. Espinosa, if you can call the roll for Ms. Edmonds' approval to the Library uh, Commission. Yes, Councilmember Lee. Aye. Councilmember Bonin. Aye. And Councilmember Ridley Thomas. Truly impressive, aye. This, uh, uh, your your you. appointment passes. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Ms. Edmonds, and we'll see you in council. All right, Mr. Clerk, if you can move on uh, to the next item on our agenda, item number three. Two, fl two top flight nom nominees, Mr. Yes. Chairman. I, uh, You're very impressive. Speaks highly for the city. Yeah. You're very uh, point authority. Thank you so much. Yes, item number three is a report from the city administrative officer relative to a concession agreement <laughs> with First and Broadway Partners. LLC for the development, operation, and maintenance of a food and beverage concession at the First and Broadway Park Restaurant Complex. All right, I believe we have, is it uh, Ms. Ramos here from the CEO's office to read a report? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, would you like me to give an overview of the agreement or would you just have some questions on, on the report? Well, if you can over a uh, brief very brief overview of the agreement would be great. Yeah, so this uh, contract was approved by our board and it, the intent is to have a concessionaire in place uh, for when the project, the full project is fully funded. Um, the agreement basically will not take effect unless the base project moves forward. And there's no risk to the city as, and as far as um, there won't be any investment made by First and Broadway Partners until they get the green light from uh, the Department of Recreation and Parks to start with design. Okay, that was really the answer. I think you answered my question, just making sure that we aren't liable, like entering into this contract, if we don't move forward at any time with uh, improving the site and improving this Grand Park, we're not on the, we don't stand any liability towards or responsibility towards uh, this vendor, correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, Councilman Bonin, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, thanks. It's same questions for, for this as I have for, for number four. Uh, you know, we are we're living in times of a lot of uh, economic upheaval, um, and um, I'm concerned about the, the potential of labor disruptions with both this 
and the next agreement. And I really want to make sure that we're protecting the city and our residents from that, that possibility. And uh, over the past several years uh, at, at the airport at LAX with the concessions there, uh, we implemented a labor peace agreement uh, that applies to concessions and to retail and to, to duty-free workers. And you know, labor peace agreements can prevent labor disruptions uh, that can ultimately cost the city resources. And it's been the right tool uh, at LAX. And I think it's, it's perhaps the right tool here as well. Um, and you know, similarly, the state of California has agreements covering operations at university campuses. Several cities and several states have similar policies in order to protect their revenues and ensure there are no labor disruptions. Uh, and of course, the other benefit is that you know, strikes and lockouts and boycotts uh, don't happen under a labor peace agreement. And that's a good thing because they can interrupt the revenue earned by the leaseholder uh, and cost the government agencies money. So I, I think a labor peace agreement would make sense for both this and the next one. And, and so I guess my question for the city attorney is, can we um, uh, add a requirement for a labor peace agreement or do we need to send it back to the commission to do so if that were the pleasure of the committee? Commissioner Mike Dunn, the city attorney's office. Uh, under the admin code uh, under which the council asserts jurisdiction over this, uh, LAM, LAAC 10.5, the action of the committee and the full council would be only to vote the contract up or down um, and without making amendments. So it would have to be sent back to the board, but you can certainly voice your request to the board to add such a, a, a term to both contracts upon uh, after disapproving the agreements. Okay, I, I, I would make that motion then as we send it back to the, the commission uh, with the request that they consider labor peace agreement. Second that, Mr. Chair. Hey, uh, Mr. City Attorney, if, if you can explain a little bit more, I know that um, Mr. Bonin brought up the uh, labor peace agreement that we have at the airport. And is that the same situation that we would need for, I mean, I, I know we're, 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 we're talking about a labor agreement here. I thought, isn't this item just about approving this, approving this uh, agreement with them? I mean, is this, this is not about their labor agreement, correct? Well, for item number three, which right. um, the, it's a agreement with First and Broadway Partners to operate the conce a concession at what is to be a future park across the street from City Hall. Um, it's in so operating the concession, the operator will have obviously have employees. It's up to the city and, and the board as the entity with jurisdictional control over, over park property to make decisions on how the, how the concessionaires have to engage with their employees, obviously in coordination with all of the other city laws that apply. And so can our commission put that as an agreement to have a labor project peace agreement, sorry, labor peace agreement as part of moving forward with this contract? I can, what I can, what I can say with respect to the authority of the committee and the full council is, the decision here today is either to approve or disapprove of the agreement, um, if or take no action. If no action is taken, it becomes approved as a matter of law, um, and so those are the two actions. There's nothing that you could actually amend or add to the contract today. You would either, according to the council member Ron's intention, simply disapprove the contract, send it back to the board and ask them to reconsider the, uh, or send a different version back to council for approval. So if we vote on council member Bonin's uh, motion, then it, it doesn't, doesn't kill this contract. My, my, my concern is, is that we put out our RFP, if I'm reading the notes correctly, and we received no responses. And this is the one company that uh, actually responded to the city uh, uh, in moving forward with what what our desires were to have at this new park. So this doesn't kill this contract if we approve this motion or does it? Well, I, I believe, I don't want to put words in the council member's mouth, but I believe he was simply seeking, introduced a motion to disapprove the contract. Um, and then with the recommendation to, to the Board of Recreation Marks Commissioners to add the labor language. So yes, it would, it would if, if adopted by the full council, it would uh, reject the contract and send the board back to do the work again. But the board could also, in its own authority, send back the very same contract a second time. Um, but that's up to the board to do under the charter. 
I mean, if we could amend it, we could amend it, but we can't. So we have to, in order to effectuate it, it has to go back to the commission to do it. Okay, so you want to basically kill, kill the contract and then have them start all over again on a process of reaching an agreement with a new vendor or this vendor in the future? I, I, I wouldn't use that language of killing right. the contract. No, it's, it's disapproving the contract for the board to reconsider uh, the contract with the provision of a labor peace agreement. Okay. So, Mr. Clerk, we uh, consider Mr. Bonin's motion. Yes, and this is to disapprove um, this contract. Um, Council Member Lee. Oh, uh, Mr. Chair, for sake of clarification, if I may. Yes, of course, Mr. Thomas. The thrust of the, the motion, as I understood it, was to uh, initially uh, seek the option to amend. Pursuant to county, uh, pursuant to city attorney uh, intervention, that option is not available to us at this juncture. So um, my seconding, uh, seconding the motion made by Mr. Bonin uh, is without prejudice vis-a-vis -vis the uh, current contractor. It is essentially to insert language that uh, addresses labor peace. I do not think it's an accurate interpretation. And Mr. Bonin, correct me if you wish, uh, <clears throat> to suggest that this is an attempt to do anything with respect to the um, the commission's decision with regard to the contractor. It is essentially to cause the contract to support with our uh, uh, hopes and expectations with regard to labor peace. It would seem to me that the uh, commission could very well make that uh, amendment if it uh, deemed it appropriate and send it back through the process accordingly. Precisely. Uh, so, that would certainly be my uh, hope and anticipation. Yeah, so the interpretation to which you uh, speak, Mr. Uh, Chair, respectfully, is inconsistent with the uh, intent of the uh, maker of the motion, as is indicated by Mr. Bonin, and uh, the seconder of the motion. Uh, and the only reason we're doing it this way is because the city attorney uh, communicates that we have essentially no other option with respect to uh, amendment rather than sending it back through the process. Just a point of clarification as to intent here. I'm trying to understand what happens if we move forward with Councilmember Bonas. Um, Ms. Ramos, can you tell me, I mean, is there a reason why Breck Marks doesn't include this like we do at LAWA? Uh, well, actually it came from LAWA and if I recall correctly, the, the reason we instituted was labor peace at LAWA was because it's an airport environment and we wanted to ensure that there'd be no disruption of airport operations in the event of a dispute between labor and concessionaires. Um, a rec and parks is a different situation, whereas you're not, you're not a, a transportation hub that that's, you know, essential to everyday functions. Um, and so that's my understanding as to why it's not, it's never been introduced into the rec and parks contracts. Um, Matthew <laughs> Rudnick, Matthew Rudnick, uh, my AGM is also on if, if you want to add anything, Matthew. Mr. 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 Chair, if I may. Of course, Mr. Mark, really, Thomas. Uh, Mr. Chair, labor peace is labor peace, and I don't know that it ought to be uh, situationally applied. Uh, we want to honor uh, our agreements and shore up our values with respect to working men and women throughout uh, the city of Los Angeles. I don't know why there should be any inconsistency uh, with respect to uh, Lawa versus uh, Rec and Parks. Um, and so I just want to say for the record, it seems to me that there ought to be a consistency of argumentation uh, that puts us in a place that upholds uh, the values uh, that we articulate as a city that embraces uh, 
the dignity of labor and to avoid disruption uh, wherever we can to the extent that's reason. We do not wish to have disruption or lack of labor peace at recreation and parks facilities either. It's consequential. Thank you, Mr. Ridley Thomas. Uh, Mr. Rodney, does this delay affect this? Anything move forward? I mean, if we send it back, is there, are there any? Does it cause any issues? And I believe you're muted, Mr. Rudnick. And I, we still cannot hear you. I, I don't know. It's, uh, maybe you're having issues with your mic, but it does show that you're muted right now. Okay, Miss Miss Ramos, uh, we can't. We can't. We have some technical difficulties with this Rudnick. Uh, can you answer that question? Does this? Sending this back is the, what is the delay? If the, it delays this process, does it cause any issues with us moving forward with our this park project? Uh, well, there's a risk that we may, you know, lose the a very qualified um, partner who's got a great track rec record with the city and is willing to invest a sizable amount into the project. Um, so I'll say that was that would be the the largest risk here. And, and just to add, the labor peace agreement uh, does not necessarily require uh, concessionaires employees to unionize. I think it just it does but it does protect from disruption of service, disruption of um, operations. All right, uh, committee members, any other questions? All right, Mr. Clerk, if you can call the roll on uh, Mr. Bonin's motion. Yes, so this would be to disapprove the um, the contract before us and to add the language to request um, for changes um, with, the, with the labor language. Just to, clarify, just to clarify, to make a recommendation to add the language. Yes. And make a recommendation to add the language. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Refer it back to committee. I mean, is it necessary to say that we're disapproving anything? Can it not be simply referred back to committee? Uh, it, it's, it is because of the time limit in the admin code, it is necessary to actually disapprove it by the 60 day period, which is set in the council file. So yes, it is required. Yes, and this will be in council tomorrow. It has yeah. the next day placeholder. Yeah. Yeah. The committee's awareness, the 60 days will run during recess. So this is the time to act if you're going to act at all. Otherwise it will become Approved. Otherwise, it's approved without action. Yes. This is our, uh, if I'm correct, Ms. Ramos, one more time. This is the only company that responded to this RFP, correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. And they're willing to make a, what is it, $6 million investment into the park to build this? Correct. Asking for? That's what they're guaranteeing, but they're actually estimating closer to $8 million. All right, Mr. Espinosa, if you can call the roll on Mr. Bonin's motion. Yes, yeah. Con uh, Council Member Lee. No. Council Member Bonin. Yes. And Council Member Ridley Thomas. Aye. This a motion passes two votes to one, um, one, two votes yes, one vote no. Mr. Espinosa, I'd like to move forward a minority report to recommend the approval of the item. Yes, I will add that into the council file tomorrow. Thank you. All right, Mr. City Clerk, I believe that brings us to item number four. Item number four is a report from the city administrative officer relative to the first amended and restated agreement with SMG Greek Theater Venue and Concession Man Management. Ms. Ramos, I believe you're here from Rec and Parks to talk about this item as well. Yes. Um, Rachel Ramos, Concessions Manager, Rec and Parks. Also on is Matthew Rednick, uh, my assistant GM. And this item is uh, extends the current agreement with SNG for operation of the Greek. Uh, the extension is due to the cancellation of the 2020 season um, and waiving the minimum annual guarantee for the concessions 
since they are also closed due to the closure of the of the venue. Thank you. Um, I think is there, Mr. Bonin, if you'd like to start us off with any concerns you have. Uh, yeah, I was going to make the same motion here that we send it back to the commission uh, for consideration of a labor peace agreement. Mr. Ridley Thomas, do you have any questions for Ms. Ramos? No, no questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, and um, I would uh, second that. Uh, and I am having some um, uh, concern about the uh, interpretation of the uh, amendment or the desire to uh, create a more explicit treatment of the matter of labor peace. Um, uh, I would say the following. There is no desire here uh, to um, impugn um, the motives of the contractor, um, otherwise known as no shade here, Mr. Chairman. Um, it is essentially to maximize the opportunity for those who work in one status or another uh, in this city to be able to do so and our ability to enjoy uh, a modicum of peace. Any interpretation otherwise, Mr. Chairman, I would respectfully say this represents the intent of my uh, seconding this motion. I don't uh, wish to uh, suggest that there is a, a personal uh, statement being issued here, but for the record, uh, I think this is uh, not about a particular concessionaire. It is essentially about the principles, the values that we seek to advance uh, listed among them would be labor peace. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rudy Thomas and Ms. Ramos. If, if if I understand some of the different concerns, as far as the concessions that concessioners at the Greek theater, they have to follow the rules that are applied to the city of Los Angeles, correct? As our, our concessionaire, is, am I correct in that? Uh, by rules, uh, can you specify what, which rules? Uh, can we impose on them that they follow certain like guidelines as far as healthcare, if, so that they're running alongside the same guy. I'm just asking, do we have that ability to put that onto them, onto this contract? Because I know that healthcare was a major issue in this issue and that, you know, if we could request that they follow the same guidelines as the city of LA for qualifying for healthcare, is that possible to do? Well, they are subject to the living wage ordinance. Um, I would defer to city attorney as to, as far as what rights a city has to impose onto the concessionaires. I will say that this particular uh, concessionaire has been in negotiations uh, with the unions for, and is very close to reaching a deal, a collective bargaining agreement with, with them. And colleagues, I'm just trying to make sure that we don't delay any of the openings and that we're moving forward so that we're not in danger of losing any of these contracts and that we're moving forward with going back to some sort of normalcy here in the city of Los Angeles with a contract with a contract that we've already approved in the past and moving forward just an extension because of what happened you know I, I, I feel like we're penalizing a company that has already gone through the process and so I'm asking for a no vote on and move this forward with an approval so Mr. Espinoza and this would be similar to the previous item where we um, disapprove the contract, but we would um, send it back to the board with um, a asking them to add labor language, correct? Correct. Okay, so that would be um, Council Member Lee? No. Council Member Bonin? Yes. And Council Member Ridley Thomas? Aye. Okay, so this also approves, is approved um, two votes to one? And Mr. Espinosa, if I can have the same request as the previous item to send a minority report. Yes, that will be on the council file tomorrow. And this, both of these items will be heard in council tomorrow. Thank you very much. And that brings us to item number five, am I correct? Yes, item number five is a motion from council members Rodriguez, 
Martinez Raman and Coretz relative to the state funding available for health care, pursuing resources to create universal child care, and the plan to distribute contracts and provide equitable access to child care in communities of color. And Mr. Sonata, if I'm correct, I, I have an amendment to the moving clause, if you don't mind me reading that in. Sure. Yes, please. Okay. That uh, I therefore move that the Housing and Community Investment Department with the assistance of the chief legislative analyst, be directed to report on state funding available for child care and how the department will pursue the resources to create universal child care, as well as the plan to distribute contracts and provide equitable access to child care in communities of color. Thank you. Do I need a second on that, Mr. Susan? On that amendment? Would one of the council members like, oh, yes, Council Member Ridley Thomas will second that. Thank you very much. And if we can, uh, Council Member Bonin or Council Member Ridley, do you have any questions on this item? No. Yes, sir. All right, we can move forward with this okay. item. I will um, call the roll. Council Member Lee? Yes. Council Member Bonin? Yes. And Council Member Ridley Thomas? Aye. This is approved as amended. All right, and I believe item number six has an amendment. If you can read. Uh, off number six, and then I will read into an amendment. Yes, um, item number six is a motion from Council Members Rodriguez, Ridley Thomas, Coretz, and Harris Dawson relative to the creation of the Olivia Mitchell Youth Council, which will include one male and one female young person per council district who will serve one year terms. And colleagues, I have an amendment adding a secondary moving clause, and that reads as follows I further move that upon the creation of a youth development. Department, the Olivia Mitchell Youth Council be staffed by the, the department. Can I have a second on that? Sure. All right. Thank okay. you, Thomas. All right, Mr. Espinosa. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Bronin, do you have any questions on this item? No, I was I was racing Mr. Ridley Thomas to second. <laughs> Mr. Ridley Thomas, do you have any questions on this item? Just a, a comment, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Thank you. And one of the best investments we can make, in my view, for the future is an investment in our youth. For me and uh, for so many others who have become public officials, uh, community leaders, and uh, change agents, community organizers, uh, it started with the Youth Advisory Council here in the city of Los Angeles. So I said when this matter was introduced to the council this past February, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bonin, I, I'm thankful for Mayor Tom Bradley and his staff for investing in this program at the time. And no one was more instrumental in the youth uh, council's success than Olivia Mitchell. Uh, she can lay claim to generations of civic minded individuals who are in the public sector working for the common good. We should celebrate her at any at any and every opportunity possible. I think it's suiting for it to be named in her honor. It's time to bring back a space for young people uh, who have a desire to make a difference, to help them develop critical consciousness uh, to introduce them to the intricacies of uh, public policy making, uh, to have them gird up their loins, to test their mettle in terms of dealing with the, bureauc the, the bureaucracy itself. All of that is important. They cannot learn it too soon. So I'm enthusiastically supportive of this effort, Mr. Chair. Thank Council Member Rodriguez for her leadership in this regard. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Ridley Thomas. I think we'll find out in a second, but I think that we couldn't agree with you more. Mr. Espinoza, if you can call the roll on this item. Council Member Lee. Aye. Council Member Bonin. Aye. And Council Member Ridley Thomas. Aye. Item number six passes as amended. Okay, Mr. Clerk, is there anything else before us? I believe we still have items number seven and eight before I us. I apologize. Okay. Um, would you like me to call item number seven into the roll? 
Please. Oh, into the record. Um, this is a report from the city, um, city attorney and an ordinance relative to amending the Los Angeles Municipal Code to allow the riding of non-motorized bicycles, scooters, inline skates, roller skates, or wheelchairs in the skate parks under the control of the Department of Recreation and Parks. Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. Uh, Mr. Bonin, do you have any questions regarding the signing? I, I did. I had a question for, for the city attorney on this. I, I understand that the, uh, the the state legislation was changed to uh, say that we could include this language in an ordinance. What I'm unclear on is whether the in, intent or the effect is to allow recreation and parks to make a decision about whether to have this apply to individual skate parks or whether uh, this mandates or makes it the standard that uh, that all of the skate parks uh, allow the, the range of non-motorized vehicles outlined in the, the motion. The ordinance as proposed would have the effect, I, I, just to take a step back, Council Member, because you're asking about the, the relationship between the City Council and, and the board's control of the properties is that just is that the gist of the question well yeah what i'm asking I'll, I'll i'll sort of explain the rationale behind it i've got three skate parks uh in my district uh venice westchester stoner park they're all uh very very different um uh, and they were designed very very differently the the one at venice beach for instance is a bowl which is below sea level essentially uh, it doesn't have a lot of stuff that you go up, like at many others, it goes down. Uh, and I could see that that having in a very crowded skate park, by the way, uh, adding uh, uh, BMX bikes uh, or particularly at some of those very steep grades, rollerblades would be problematic. I mean, the park was not designed for that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering if by passage of this ordinance, that means that that all of those devices listed in here are allowed or if Reckon Parks makes a decision based on each skate park, what is allowed and what isn't. The, it's, I think this, this the easiest way to explain it is that the, what the ordinance does today is decriminalize the use of those devices in skate parks. I believe that the department would still have the authority um, to set by rule the you know, based on, as you're saying, the, the design standards and the actual um, ability for those devices to actually operate in, in certain design parks to control what they're allowed to do. Ultimately, this is about minimizing the city's liability for allowing the operation. And so I, I think I think a person who use a person who uses, for example, um, a scooter or rollerblades wouldn't be allowed, wouldn't be, couldn't be charged or written a citation in a fraction of, it, of kind for doing that based on this ordinance. It doesn't mean that they're, the department actually is, is required to open up facilities to all such devices. I'm, it's a fine line drawing. I'm, I'm totally unclear on that. By passage of this ordinance, are, are all of these devices allowed at all the skate parks in the city once this ordinance is, is uh, gone into effect? I would say that it's not illegal to use them in, in those facilities. <laughs> well, okay, so they're allowed. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's by, by, by nature of law, yes, but they couldn't, a person couldn't be criminalized for using one. Yeah. Right, so if Reckon Parks wanted to do something different, they have to take a proactive step to, and then come up with some different enforcement mechanism in order to keep it limited to how it was designed. That's correct. There is a different section of the municipal code under 6344 that does allow the board, I believe it's 6344B7, that does allow the board to set aside property for specific use. And then it becomes a separate violation of 6344 to violate the board's designated use. So presumably then that the board could set aside a particular location in your district, for example, for just skateboards only. Has the department weighed in on this ordinance? Not to my knowledge, no. Yeah, I, sp I spoke to Mr. Shul a little bit earlier today, and he was—he uh, had concerns that this would be 
a universal standard as opposed to one that was reflective of the individual designs. Um, uh, well, I, I've, I've, I've got concerns about it the way it's written as it's overly broad. So I'm a, I'll be a no vote on this. Mr. Ridley Thomas, do you have any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a um, question that I'd like to pose for the committee's consideration apropos to an earlier uh, matter that we adopted, namely the Youth Advisory Council. Uh, did I say in my remarks that one of the reasons for getting them started early in leadership is so that they can uh, learn how to interpret or decipher what the city attorney is offering by way of uh, counsel? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have to say on the matter at hand. <laughs> Just trying to keep up here. Okay, is there anyone from Reckon Parks that can weigh in on this issue? Is this a matter that can be continued, Mr. Uh, Chair? Would you have any unreadiness about that so we can sort through this a little more effectively? I'm wondering, is it time sensitive? Mr. Espinoza, is it time sensitive? Anything? There is no time through? limit associated with this action. Okay. So if uh, I, if we can, uh, Mr. Riley Thomas, you move to uh, move this to the continue this to the next side, next agenda. With with your permission, Mr. Chair, and uh, and in the interim, convene the Youth Advisory Council for the deliberative process. Thank you so much. Mr. Bonney, do you have any issues with that? No, that's perfectly fine with me. Okay, so Mr. Spinoza, if we can continue this item, do we need to take a roll call on that? No, I don't believe so. Okay, so then we can move on to item number eight. Item number eight is a report from the city attorney and ordinance relative to amending the Los Angeles Municipal Code to allow spe specified hours for First Amendment activities in designated spaces on the Venice Beach Boardwalk. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Councilmember Bwani, you had uh, you called this on special. Would you like to make any comments? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Mr. Ridley Thomas may remember fondly back during his first time on the council when uh, some of the more controversial issues the city council dealt with back then was vending on on the Venice Beach Boardwalk. Uh, the, oh. um, uh, the, uh, th this item is a, is, is a couple years old, and I know it's a result of uh, 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 litigation over First Amendment and, and protected speech. It impacts the hours of operation. Um, is uh, is the city attorney who's handling this here? Just had a, a question or two. Is that Mike or is that Valerie? Uh, Va Valerie is not here, but I should I, hopefully I can answer your question, sir. Uh, well, my 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 issue was here. Uh, who has been brought up to speed on these changes? Uh, has is, is Rec and Park staff? Uh, locally at Venice Beach aware of this? Uh, are the uh, uh, beach detail that is in charge of enforcing this aware of it? Uh, has the neighborhood council been brought up to speed on it? I just wanted to uh, see who's been looped in. Yeah, uh, so uh, aside from the neighborhood council, sir, I can answer that yes, LAPD and Rec and Parks actually have been operating as if it were law already in accordance with the settlement agreement. I don't know about the neighborhood council, but this the mere fact that this is coming to this committee now is is simply an oversight based on the fact that it, it was meant to have been agendized a long time ago, but the departments have already been operating as if it were law. Okay, great. I would just uh, ask that before it go to council, is, is there a, a date scheduled for this one, Mr. Espinoza, and council? There's not yet. Okay, I would just ask that before it goes to council, if um, uh, someone from the city attorney's office can uh, reach out to the neighborhood council and make sure they're looped in. Otherwise, I'll move approval. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bonham, Mr. Ridley Thomas. Do you have any questions or comments regarding this item? Uh, Ms. Espinoza, if you can call the roll on item number eight. Yes, Councilmember Lee. Aye. Councilmember Bonin. Aye. And Councilmember Ridley Thomas. Aye. This item passes as, as written, and um, the ordinance moves forward to council. Okay. Mr. Clerk, are there any other items to consider? No, the desk is clear. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you to my two committee members and the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bye guys. Thank you.